Hi guys! Last week we went shopping and we found this cool t-shirt. So we decided to buy it specially for this video. Any guesses why? So let's find out! Today we will test the PlaySmart 3D printer from Polaroid. This printer has some nice features and we are very curious to check them out. The print volume is 120 by 120 by 120 millimeters. It's equipped with a camera inside and we can see the live image while printing. The files can be transferred by memory card, USB flash drive or mobile app. Can print layer heights from 0.05 up to 0.3 millimeters has a 3.5 inch color touchscreen can print PLA, PETG and wood and includes a filament holder with scale inside the box there are several things but let's take everything out and Rui will talk about them one by one hey you guys okay these are the accessories that are included with the printer. We have a quick start guide written in several languages. A box with three spare nozzles and a tool to replace them. These are 0.4 millimeter nozzles and they include the heat brick. This is the external power supply, the output is 12 volts, 9.9 .9 amps. They also include 1 kilogram of PLA filament. The filament diameter is 1.75 millimeters. And this is the spool holder which is also a scale. It's battery operated and uses a couple of AA batteries. The display indicates the weight of the filament left on the spool. The piece that holds the spool is not compatible with our filament PM spools, but it should be easy to design and print a different one. However, we don't know if it will mess with the balance point of the scale and interfere with the results. And this is the printer. The PTFE tube needs to be installed, so let's start with that. On the hot end side, the PTFE tube only goes in just a few millimeters, so there is no risk of having print issues due to a bad PTFE tube installation. At the back side, we connect the power supply plug. The information on the screen looks intuitive and well distributed. The hot end is completely protected, and although it's small in size, it's equipped with a fan to cool the heatsink and a fan for the layer cooling. And for the layer cooling, we see a nice fan duct which directs the air all around the nozzle. The extruder is located on the outside and can be easily accessed if needed. The printer's structure is made entirely of plastic but looks very rigid. The camera is very small and can be seen from the back side. It 
also has a couple of LED light strips to illuminate the print area. The heat bed and the cable can be easily removed to either prepare the surface or remove the prints when finished. There are four magnets on the bottom side to secure it on the platform. At the front, we have the memory card slot and the USB slot. On the display, we can turn the lights off and on. We can access the camera image, take pictures or record movies and access the album and history. Pressing the access button, we have the home button and we can also move the X, Y and Z axis with 5 or 10 millimeter increments. And under filament, we have the load and unload filament buttons. Under settings and at the top, we have the menu to set up the Wi-Fi. Next, we have the bed leveling. This will allow us to go through the bed leveling procedure. All the steps are explained in detail on the screen. We also have the print bed calibration. This will be used to define the nozzle to bed distance. The nozzle replacement procedure is also explained step by step on the screen. We will go through this later on. We have language menu where we can select which language we want to use. Next we have the menu to pair the printer with the smartphone. And finally the firmware update menu. Here we can see which version is currently installed in the machine and when connected to the Wi-Fi, we can check for updates and automatically install new firmware versions. So let's start with the bed leveling procedure. The printer automatically heats up the bed up to 75 degrees C. After reaching the temperature, we see the indication on the screen to make sure the heat bed cable is properly connected. But this does not make sense at this point since the heating procedure has begun on the previous step. Next, we need to loosen the nuts. The bed has a couple of nuts on each corner. The top one is for leveling and the bottom one is to lock and prevent the top one to rotate itself with the vibrations. Next, the axes are homed and the hot end moves to the first position. With a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper, we level the first corner. Then it moves to the second position to level that corner. For this small heat pad, we think that they defined a temperature too high for the bed leveling and it's a bit hard not to touch the hot bed while leveling. To prevent this, use a bigger sheet of paper when leveling. And the same for the other two corners. There is not enough room in this small printer, so this procedure is not very easy and even more because we have the bed at 75 degrees C. And the last step is to tighten the nuts.
you need to pay special attention to these nuts because if they are not properly locked, they might fall while printing. If you look at the back bottom side, you will see this opening for the heat pad cable. If one of these nuts falls in there, it will cause shorts and damage the printer. Polaroid should place this connector at the side wall or in a different way and not have this big opening with components and PCB exposed. And the leveling procedure is now complete. We then need to calibrate the bed to nozzle distance. In this step, the printer will move the nozzle to the center of the bed. Then we place a sheet of paper on the bed and next we move the bed up. First we move in 1 mm steps and then in 0.1 mm steps. The procedure is similar with the bed leveling where we need to set the correct height using the paper. When at the correct height, we save the position and it's done. Now we can load the film. We just need to insert a little bit of filament in. Then we select load and the machine will start loading the filament automatically when the nozzle reaches 220 degrees C. Polaroid provides an app for Apple and Android that you can download and install. We tested the Android version that is available free on Google Play Store. Using the pair printer option on the display, we can use the QR code to quickly link the printer. With this app, we can access some models that are ready to print and send the file already in G-code format directly to the printer. We can also control all the printer and get the live camera image on the cell phone. They also provide a slicer if we want to use our own STL files or print with different quality settings. It can also access Polaroid's model library. The slicer is super easy to work with and it doesn't require much 3D printing knowledge. At the top we have the load options, under settings we only have the auto range and help. We can load an STL file by clicking on add model as well. The model is placed on the bed and we can move all around. On the right side we can change the size of the model. And the reset button will reset the model to its original condition. Under rotation we can change the orientation of the model. And with copy, we can clone the model if we decide to print several at the same time. At any time, we can delete any of them. We can also modify the model's position if, for example, we want to print above a certain height.
the Place on Desktop button places the model correctly on the surface of the print area, and the outer range will center the model on the bed. Under Filament, you can access the link to buy more filament from Polaroid. And under Print, you get the print options. In here, you can select if you want to use supports, you choose which filament type you will use, and this is important because this is how the slicer will know which will be the nozzle temperature to use, and the print quality. You can choose between draft, normal, and high. There is an advanced settings button too. In here, you can modify several settings and print with your own custom settings. There are just a few settings you can change. You can change the layer height, which is the print quality, print speed, bed temperature, and you can tweak the support settings. You can modify the shell thickness, fill density, and number of layers, and the model base. The difference between the three print quality options is basically a different layer height and print speed. When using draft, it uses a layer height of 0.3 mm and a speed of 60 mm per second. When using normal, it uses 0.2 mm layer height and a speed of 50 mm a second. And when using high, it uses 0.1 mm layer height and a speed of 40 mm per second. If you change any of the settings, the print quality will be changed to custom but you cannot save your settings for a future print. When clicking on print, the software slices the model and gives the estimated time of printing and total filament weight required. Clicking on start, it will export the G-code file and then we can load the file on the printer. Every time when printing a model, we can choose if we want to do picture capture and if we select yes, the printer will create the time-lapse movie at the end. The slicer also has a cool multicolor print feature. With this option, we can add several pauses at a specific heights for color changing. The printer, when reaching the defined height, will pause the print and allow you to remove the current filament with one of a different color. The multicolor tool is very easy to work with and very intuitive. As we just mentioned, the slicer has only a few settings we can play with, but there is a very important one missing. We are referring to a vase mode option to print vases. We can select one wall thickness and no infill, but that will not print in vase mode and will create the Z seam. We also cannot define the number of bottom layers separately from the top ones, which is very important for this case. Another thing we noticed with the Polaroid slicer is that the model is printed facing backwards when compared with the view from the slicer. And when we try to slice this hand model with a height close to the limit, we get a strange warning on the printer's display. The hand was scaled to have a total height of 118 millimeters, but the message seems to indicate that it has 123 millimeters. Nevertheless, hitting print will start the job and it prints the entire hand.
Some of the models we tested using our own slicer and profile as well. The printer displays the remaining time, but this is never accurate. We also noticed some bugs with this when using our own slicer software. In this case, the print finished and the remaining time was far from accurate. And at the end, we got an error on the screen. The print, however, finished correctly. We also noticed during our test prints some oil appearing on top of the hot end. This is probably coming from the axis and it's oil that the factory added to grease the rods. While printing one of our test phases, we used a filament sample which was not enough for the entire print. And the printer kept on printing since it's not equipped with a filament runout sensor. But on the other hand, the printer has the print resume feature in case of power failure. We tested that and the print resumed the job automatically when the power was turned back on. We didn't have to press anything, it continues the print by itself. Replacing the nozzle is also very straightforward. The printer displays all the instructions on the screen. The printer first waits for the nozzle to lower its temperature below 50 degrees C. Then we need to remove the bottom cover of the hot end. With the provided tool, we loosen the set screw located inside. And just like that, the nozzle comes off. Then we get the new nozzle and insert it in the hot end and tighten back the set screw. And finally we place the bottom cover. If you don't have a complicated clog that requires changing the entire nozzle and heat break, you can buy just a nozzle from a different brand as it will be cheaper for sure. And these are all the test prints that we have made. So now let's analyze them. The hand was printed using the Android application and transferred directly to the printer from the app. We see minor issues, but overall is not bad. We also printed this mask through the application. We can see that the eyes are not perfect, but it didn't use any supports. We then printed this model several times, but using different slicer settings. This first one was printed with their own settings in draft mode. In draft mode, we can see that the print quality is far from good, but I guess this mode is meant for speed, not quality. This one printed in 47 minutes. Then we printed this in normal mode. The print quality with normal mode increased a lot, but we still see some issues, especially on the belly and chin area. This one took 1 hour and 8 minutes. And this one was printed using the high quality settings. The outer walls are smoother, but there are still issues with the hanging areas. 
This print in high quality took 2 hours and 15 minutes. We tweaked the settings and we were able to increase the print quality with our own settings. But the major difference was achieved when we sliced the model using a different slicer software. We created our own profile in Simplify 3D and the print quality was much better. It was printed with a 0.16 mm layer height and it took 1 hour and 29 minutes to print. We repeated the print using the Polaroid filament and the quality is the same. The hand was chosen to test the detail quality of the printer. Using Simplify 3D and Polaroid Slicer, the detail quality is very good. The major issues we see is again with the hanging areas which was much better when using Simplify 3D. The vase model printed with the color change feature looked very good except for the Z-SIM because the Polaroid slicer does not have the vase mode option. You cannot see any issues on the color transitions. This unicorn was sliced with Simplify 3D and our own profile using a layer height of 0.16 millimeters. This print allowed us to see the potential of the layer cooling capability. As you can see with the top of the print, the layer cooling is very efficient when printing these small details. Since the Polaroid slicer does not have vase mode, we sliced a vase in vase mode in Simplify 3D and the result was much better. We did a few more stress tests to the printer. Here we wanted to test the vibrations. As you can see, with this cube there is no ghosting whatsoever. We also tested the printer for salmon skin. Although we cannot see any salmon skin on the prints, my stress test revealed a very small and faded amount. So in conclusion, this printer comes with all the extras except for the filament sensor. It's very easy to use and any user that doesn't know anything about 3D printing will be able to print in just a few minutes. The printer is capable of printing with very good results, but you need to use a different slicer and your own dial-in profile. There are a few firmware bugs, but we hope that Polaroid releases future versions to fix them. Please check below the video description for additional information and where you can buy this printer. Thanks for watching. As always, if you like our work, you can support the channel with Patreon or PayPal. Keep following us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next time. Bye!